The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, weekdays 4 Eastern. Comedian Bill Maher, he's the host of Real Time on HBO. That's our sister network. He's been a big fan of the president, but in recent days, he's become a little bit critical. Uh, let's go to Bill Maher right now. Uh, Bill, thanks for joining us. Hey, good to see you, Wolf. Uh, you wrote a provocative piece uh, in which you actually said that you would hope in some respects this president to be more like George W. Bush. I want you to explain what you have in mind. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I'm just talking personality-wise, the way George Bush was able to push through uh, things that <laughs> people weren't even asking for, like attacking Iraq. Uh, you know, George Bush didn't care whether it was something that was approved of by the Congress, by the Constitution, uh, by the Magna Carta. <laughs> he just did what he wanted to do. And I would like to see a little bit of that in Barack Obama, so, not care so much if he's popular, not care so much if he's stepping on toes, not care so much if he's expending too much political capital. I would like to see him lay it on the line and stand up against the uh, energy companies, the banking industry, the healthcare industry, uh, all the corporations uh, who really need to be stood up to. So where are you most disappointed? Because uh, I know a, a lot of uh, people on the left, a lot of liberals are disappointed he hasn't done more to advance uh, gay rights, for example. But where, where, where are you most disappointed in this president? Why do you bring up that with me, Wolf? What have you heard? Nothing. Uh, no, I'm <laughs> no I, I mean, that's certainly something that I know gay people are upset about. Uh, it doesn't affect my life personally because I've never understood marriage and I've never understood being gay. So <laughs> I don't really have a dog in that fight. Uh, and I understand why an issue like that can be placed on the back burner, except America has changed. I don't know if this administration really is caught up to the idea that Americans are a lot more liberal, perhaps, than we think they are. Uh, or they think they are. Uh, they've changed on that issue. They've changed on a lot of issues. Uh, and I think part of the problem is that we don't really have a progressive party in this country. We have the Democrats who are what the Republicans used to be when I was a kid. They're a pro-business party, a corporate-friendly pro-business party. And then we have the Republicans, which are just a club for angry white people and Jesus freaks. I don't know what they are. But if are. you listen to a what lot of Republicans, need, they think that this president is moving the country towards socialism. Yes, which is so ridiculous because Barack Obama is not a socialist. He's not even a liberal. That's the point I'm trying to make, is that this country needs a left wing. It doesn't have it. And part of the reason is the media. Part of the reason is because Newt Gingrich, I have to look at his fat face on television every day, uh, he represents, I don't know what, that far right of kooky town. Uh, and yet, where's the left wing? You know, Ralph Nader, uh, Dennis Kucinich, these are left wing people, although their ideas are not really that radical. But they're presented as radical in the media. They're seen as buffoons. So really what we have is a debate between the center right, the Democratic Party, and the far, far, far right, the Republican Party. There really isn't a balance in this country, and it really doesn't represent the people. So, but, I, but bottom line is, you think this president is more interested in trying to stay popular or in getting the people's work done? Well, look, first of all, he's doing a really hard job, and I'm really glad he's president. Let's not lose perspective. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when you read the paper every day, you are a little disheartened that they can't push through some some very progressive legislation, uh, pretty much in full measure. It seems like very little nibbling. Uh, environmental issues, you know, a 4% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions by 2020. You know, why don't we just have a bill that says, screw it, we're toast. Just enjoy everything you do, do you like the and way, don't even try. How do you like the way he's handling national security, specifically, for example, what's happening in Iran right now? Oh, I think he's terrific on, on foreign affairs, but that's the easy part because you don't need to negotiate with insurance companies and credit card companies and the people uh, who are lobbying, the people who make campaign contributions and the corporations who have such a stranglehold on our government. Uh, making, you know, we, we know he's a fantastic speech maker. Uh, he's Jimi Hendrix and that teleprompter is his guitar. So when he goes and makes that speech in Cairo, uh, you saw there are uh, people in the street in Tehran who are saying, 
oh, I hope Obama is backing us. Well, that's a big difference to go from an American president who not only is getting Muslim people to like him, but saying that they want him to support them. Um, so, yeah, I think he's doing a terrific job in that area. And, you know, what can, what can he really do to affect what's going on in Iran right now except use that kind of bully pulpit? I just wish he would bring that sort of influence to, to some of the issues we have here at home. Some of these domestic issues. We're almost out of time, but a quick question on uh, David Letterman's apology to Sarah Palin and her daughters. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I, I think it's a real shame. David Letterman should not have had to apologize. You know, I've known David Letterman a long time. We've all watched him a very long time. He's a very fundamentally decent Midwesterner. It's just not in his DNA to have said something that they're accusing him of saying. And it just bothers me the way some lie gets into the media and then it becomes the truth. Somehow it became conventional wisdom now that David Letterman made a rape joke about a 14-year-old. I promise you, the 14-year-old was not in their minds. They made a joke about Alex Rodriguez because he has a certain reputation as a player. Sarah Palin was at Yankee Stadium where Alex Rodriguez plays. Her family is very fertile. Her daughter did get impregnated before she was married. It was an easy and obvious joke to make. It was funny. It was not offensive in any way. And and they made it sound like he said something completely different. So he's apologizing for something he never meant, never thought, and never said. I've been through this, Wolf. It stinks. I know you've been through it. Uh, and we're going to continue to watch your show every week on our sister network, HBO Real Time with Bill Maher. Airs Friday nights, as I recall. Is that right, Bill? Yes, it is. Don't let Sarah Palin shoot you from a helicopter, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs>